Hi folks, and welcome to ECE 3311, Principles of Communication Systems. My name is Alex Wiglinski, and I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering here at Worcester Polytechnic Institute. I'm really excited to be your instructor for this course, especially since it is quite foundational for anybody who's interested in pursuing a career, either in academia or in industry or in government, in the area of communications whether it be analog communications, digital communications, wireless communications, optical communications, wired communications, you name it. If it involves any form of electromagnetic energy that is conveyed from point A and intercepted at point B and it has information embedded in it, this is the course for you. Okay. So in lecture one, we're gonna kick off this entire course with kind of an understanding of what the heck is a communication system? What are kind of the basic components that make such a system? Okay, And this will sort of provide that foundation on which we will build upon the rest of this course. All right? Boom. So communication system, anatomy. What does it consist of? Ah, glad you asked. So a communication system cons will consist of one part information source. You gotta have information that you wanna share with somebody at the other end, right? That other end, right? Terminology, we refer to that as an information sink, right? Information source could be me, blah, 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 right? Information sink could be you, could be your friend. It could even be my mom. Hey, mom, how's it going? What's the weather like in Montreal? Information sink, right? And then what's really important and this is where the course is critical, is all the parts that sort of translate that information into an electromagnetic signal that gets sent across a medium, right? If it's a wireless signal, it's over the air. That's our medium. And the environment that surrounds, that's in that, that, that air medium, right? Um, if, on the other hand, it's wired communications, whether it's fiber optic or perhaps it's copper because it's like an ethernet connection, right? That too is a medium, right? And mediums are beautiful because they play with, they distort, they manipulate that electromagnetic signal. And that creates for some really interesting situations at the receiver, which intercepts that signal and tries to translate it back into information that my sync will understand, that my sync will accept Right? So let's draw, let's, let's draw exactly how this would work, right? Okay, so what we have is we have info source, source we usually denote as SRC, that's a shorthand, right? And then we convert to EM signal. Sometimes I'm going to use the term waveform, right? Same thing, okay? It's essentially uh, electromagnetic energy that is shaped, that is manipulated, that is somehow its physical properties are adjusted such that it contains information that's related to what is being produced at the output over here of the information source. That gets then transmitted across the medium. And no, I don't mean the TV show. This refers to the environment that that electromagnetic signal propagates across. Remember, if it's a wireless signal, it propagates across the air. If it's a wired medium, it's propagating either on a fiber optic cable or on the other hand, um, it could be propagating on a copper twisted pair, which would be effectively your like ethernet connection. Then, it gets intercepted, is converted from the electromagnetic signal back into information that can be read, interpreted, understood at the information sink. Beautiful, right? Boop and boop. So this fella here, we refer to as the transmitter. Shorthand for that is TX. 
at this end, okay, the sort of the destination of this information, we refer to this as the receiver or Rx. Don't get this mistaken with prescription. Rx means receiver in this course, right? And then the medium. This is where that electromagnetic signal propagates across from transmitter to receiver. So in this course, this is essentially every communication system, right? Information source converted into electromagnetic signal propagates across a medium, gets converted from EM signal back to information signal, and then it goes into the information sink, which is the destination, right? So what's the objective of any communication system? Well, what happens is if I produce information at the information source, I want it to be perfectly sort of fed into the information sink. That means um, in terms of success, the transmitted signal and the received signal, sorry, the information that is sent from the information source and what is being fed into the information sink are identical. Perfect. So that is the goal. That is absolutely the goal. Now, going back to our slides. So this here, folks, uh, is the premise. So we're not going to focus too much on what the information source and information sync are. The, the majority of our course is going to be focused on that conversion of electromagnetic signal to an electromagnetic signal and the conversion from the electromagnetic signal. That's really the crux of this entire course is that conversion process. You might say, oh, big deal. What? So what? No, this is huge. And there are many, many, many different ways of doing this. And this course will go through quite a few of them. Okay. So in order to manipulate electromagnetic energy, right, um, and be able to convey that information over the medium, right, that almost sounds like the force, right? I'm going to like, you know, take that mitochondria and be able to manipulate electromagnetic energy such that I can send information from one part of the universe or the galaxy to another. Wow, that does sound kind of Star Wars-like. But no, 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 seriously. Um, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to convey information in an electromagnetic signal. So let, exactly how do I do that? Well, this is how, right? So if we look at what is an electromagnetic signal, right? The electromagnetic signal, EM signal or waveform, It's quite simple. The electromagnetic signal, S of T, is going to be equal to A cos 2 pi FC of T plus phi. We should have seen this, right? So you should have seen in courses like continuous time and discrete time signals and systems, you should have seen signals that look like this. What the heck is this? Let's look at it. This here is the amplitude. Okay. This here is the carrier frequency. This is a continuous, yeah, continuous time index or variable, variable, and that is the phase, okay? So we can characterize, oh, let's make this a little thicker here. We can characterize, uh, much better, S of T, okay, the electromagnetic signal which we're assuming is some sort of sinusoid, sinusoidal function, function, FCN is my shorthand for function. We can characterize this 
in terms of A, the amplitude, Fc, the carrier frequency, and phi, the phase. All right? Now, this is going to be the cool part. You might say, all right, so where's this Jedi, Jedi force type of thing kicking in? Okay, here it is. So as a Jedi, right, your role is to take some sort of message signal, M of T. And we'll talk quite a bit about what this M of T is. So this is your message. This is what's being produced at the output of your information source. And we need to map it, okay? Map it to something like A, FC, and Phi, right? And that's what gets sent out of the transmitter. Now, the receiver receives something and it's not gonna be perfect. But at the receiver, all right, at the RX, what happens is at the output, at the output of the conversion from the electromagnetic uh, signal or waveform, we get something that looks like this. Ah, oh, almost looks like M of T. Remember what I said? The ultimate goal of a communication system is that what is sent out of the information source and what is fed into the information sink would be identical? Well, under ideal circumstances, yes. Reality, unfortunately, not so much. Remember, the medium is manipulating, distorting, corrupting that signal, okay, that electromagnetic signal that's sent over the air or along the copper wire or whatever, whatever medium, right? So at the receiver, after you convert back from an electromagnetic signal, you're going to get something, but it's not going to be the original message signal. What this little hat here is, okay, the hat. In French, it's called flex, right? When we have the hat, this is what we call an estimate of M of T. Your receiver tries to reconstruct what was potentially sent at the transmitter, given the potential distortion that's around, all right? So quite, quite cool. Now, um, you might say, okay, big deal. So what, right? Well, uh, it's, it's actually, it is. It is a really big deal because you, different environments, different sources of corruption, different, thing, different considerations, and there are a lot of different types of digital communication and analog communication techniques that are well-suited in some environments, some mediums, and not well-suited in others, right? So um, about that electromagnetic energy stuff again, here's another expression that you should be mindful of, right? So remember, electro electromagnetic energy, right? That electromagnetic signal, that electromagnetic waveform represented by A cosine two pi Fc of t plus phi, right? And we said that this fella here essentially is characterized by A, F, C, and phi. Now, that Jedi Master stuff, what happens if I embed, embed, uh, Schneikies, doop, there we go. Embed M of T info in some or all of these. Wow. That, folks, is communications. That is going to be so cool. Here's another way of looking at it, and we're going to be looking at this in the course a little bit more. So S of T, okay, that is what gets sent by my TX. And as we'll see a few lectures into the class, K 
can be expressed like this as well. Right? And you might say, holy smokes, what the heck is that? This is what this is. Message signal, right? Before the conversion process. This fella here, G, this G function, this is what we call a mapping. And we're mapping M of T to something called a baseband signal. So a baseband signal looks like an electromagnetic signal, but it's centered at DC. So it's an EM signal centered at DC, i.e. FC equals zero. Now, this fella here, very important. What do we remember? from signals and systems. When we multiply anything by a complex exponential and it has a frequency term here, this is modulation. We're modulating G of M of T, that electromagnetic signal, onto a carrier FC. What does that mean? What we're effectively doing is we're modulating that carrier, uh, sorry, that information from DC, we're moving it over to a carrier frequency F of C to center frequency or carrier frequency, AKA carrier frequency FC. Beautiful. This is absolutely fantastic. All right, so this course will be doing things exactly like this. So you should be very comfortable with multiplying, let's say, both time domain waveforms, okay, with other time domain waveforms, both real and complex, using real operators, taking Fourier transforms, manipulating them, working in the frequency domain, in order to help with the design process of communication systems. All right, so this is wonderful. <laughs> yeah, and then the real operator um, has some very important properties too, as we'll see later on in the course. So we have to take the real. We can't just multiply against e to the j2 pi fc um, t. We're going to have to take the real of that product. All right, now let's go back. Do, 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 do. So that Jedi Master stuff, it's the conversion of your information signal to EM waveforms back to information signal. That's this entire course. Now, let's break it down into five bullets because one bullet is just too boring. So bullet number one, I want all of you in this course to understand analog and digital waveforms across time and frequency. That's why signals and systems are super duper important. You gotta know it. You gotta be able to work in both domains, time domain and frequency domain. Continuous signal, discrete time signal, digital signal. I also, in this course, we're gonna be looking at a lot of how do we deal with, understand and deal with that distortion that that medium introduces, which we refer to as noise, which is an unwanted signal that's added to that electromagnetic waveform before we intercept it at the receiver and interference, okay? Very critical is that transmit and receiver, even though one is sending information to the other, the receiver has got to kind of figure out where do I start decoding this information that the transmitter is sending? How do I synchronize? How do I detect? How do I sample that information? This course will introduce several tools and techniques on how to exactly do that. I want all of you in this course to be able to master the analog and digital transmission of information. So we'll look at a variety of techniques on how exactly to do that. And then finally, we'll look at assessing transmission capabilities in the communication system. So this class, so the, the area of communications is humongous. 
This class is hyper-focused on these five bullets. What this class will not focus on, we might mention it, but will not focus on it, are things like channel models, not this class. Looking at medium access and network protocols, not this class. Error performance, not this class. Building things and putting them in hardware like software-defined radio, not this class. Although very exciting, but not this class. <laughs> so this class also, I mentioned math. Yes, we're going to be playing with the math of continuous time and discrete time signals and systems. Imagine that this is essentially, if you stop taking those classes yesterday, this is the continuation of that, that those concepts, those theories, those tools applied to communication systems. We'll also be learning computer simulation tools on how folks understand and model and design these systems. And particularly, we're going to be using something called Python, right, which is a great programming language. All right, so let's draw a communication system. All right, so if we go to, there's actually, there's two ways. There are two communication systems, right? So there is an analog communication system, COMSYS, right? So the information source here Okay, um, produces information, right? Like human speech is analog, right? Um, uh, music, uh, that's an analog signal, right? Uh, um, like uh, you name it. Like if there's some sort of information that is conveyed um, uh, over like, like, you know, over a continuum of time samples, right? Um, as well as a continuum of amplitude values, right? Uh, that's an analog waveform, right? So human speech is that, uh, music uh, is that, and, and, and a variety of other uh, types of sources of information. And then uh, what happens is we do that mapping, right? And that mapping usually is something along the lines of modulation, right? So we modulate, but th this modulation is different. So when we talk about this type of modulation, I'm talking about mapping to baseband signal because there's also modulate onto a, uh, onto a carrier F of C. That, that's also modulation, but that modulation is different. That modulation takes baseband signal and modulates it up to a passband signal, a signal that is centered at FC modulate. And then uh, what ends up happening is once we do this, this, uh, th this baseband uh, uh, mapping, we also have something called the radio frequency front end. Okay. Radio frequency. Okay. F-R-E-Q. That's my shorthand for frequency front end. So what this fella is focused on is the ability to take that baseband signal, which is now located here, okay? Uh, its function is to bring it up to some carrier frequency FC. So at the output, we get S of T, and that goes to medium, okay? At the receiver, we get R of T, passband receives signal. And I'm differentiating R of T from S of T because remember the medium distorts. Radio frequency front end, in this case, brings it down from passband, okay, Modul demodulates down to a carrier frequency located at DC. It basically centers the signal in the frequency domain to DC. We demodulate it, okay, demod. So we map it from the electromagnetic signal, from the baseband signal 
to information and then send it into the information sync, right? Which could be a speaker or some sort of audio device that plays it, right? So this is from the medium. Now, oh boy, a digital communication system, very different, very different bear. Digital comm system. So first of all, digital means that our information source produces binary info. All right. But there's more than meets the eye, right? So information source, because, you know, our cell phones are digital communication devices, but I'm not speaking binary into it, and yet it's a digital communication device. What gives? Well, what happens is, let's say we have human speech, It goes through something called an audio coder, audio encoder. That produces binary info. So this here is my analog signal. This is binary, right? That's what gets sent out here. Then usually the communication system, it does a couple of fun things, which again is outside the scope of this course. What it will do is it's first going to do something called source, SRC, encoding, ENC. What that does is it's just like when you zip a file. It removes redundancy and compresses it. We can do the very same thing with binary information. So we have binary info here. Source encoding removes redundancy. So now we have a lean, mean, binary information stream. Right? Then we do something called channel encoding, CH encoding. What that does is it introduces controlled redundancy such that the receiver, if it needs to, can reconstruct corrupted information. It's absolutely fantastic. You know? Then that's binary. This is where we do again the modulation. That's the mapping, right, from binary info to amplitude, frequency, phase. Now, what's interesting is uh, at this output, it's still, it's still digit, it's, it's not binary, but it's not continuous time still. It's still discrete time, i.e. discrete time. Although the, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it, the, 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 the samples are still um, finite, right? So what we got to do here is we pass it through something called a digital to analog converter. Ah, perfect. Now that, folks, is a continuous time signal, right? And pass it through that radio frequency front end And then that is what gets sent to the medium. So here, that's baseband. That's passband. So the frequency here is at DC. So F is equal to zero, right? And here, F is equal to FC. That's where the signal is centered at. So this is just the transmitter. At the receiver, at the receiver, it's the exact opposite. So from medium, radio frequency front end, okay, we go through an analog to digital converter, we demodulate it, Okay, then what ends up happening is we also uh, do the channel decoding, right? So this is where the error correction kicks in. So if there's corrupted info, we use that controlled redundancy to recover missing or corrupted info. Then we add the redundancy back 
is through a source decoder, it goes into the information sink, which then goes through an audio decoder, and then to, let's say, your speaker or phone or person that you're talking with, right? So this is at the RX, whereas this is the TX. Now, very important in this course again, there's stuff that gets corrupted. So what happens is, let's say that carrier frequency, what happens if there's a slight carrier frequency offset? Uh, how about the sampling here, right? So we have to sample at the exact right points, otherwise we're not quite getting the right information. So here, right, we, we might have some sort of timing offset. Those are those imperfections I was telling you about that we will be looking at in this course, right? Okay, so going back to this. So that's what an analog and a digital communication system looks like. Okay. So I mentioned the concept of baseband and passband. Baseband signals, they're focused at DC. They, they, they're, they're spectral signature. If you take the Fourier transform of it, is centered at zero. Passband, centered at some non-zero frequency, FC. Analog and digital, information that's analog, essentially uh, the, that electromagnetic signal and such, um, uh, what what's ends, ends up happening is the, the information source is analog, so it's a continuum of both amplitude values and time samples, right? It's not even the time samples, it's just a continuum of time values, right? In digital, we have finite time instances that produce values, and those values can assume a finite number of amplitude amplitude values, okay? So we're gonna see a lot of this throughout the rest of this course. So I'm really excited. So this folks is lecture one of ECE 3311.